Let's talk a little bit about backwards compatibility. Ubisoft uploaded a post. Unfortunately, they took it down, so I cannot link it below or show you. We're not sure why they took it down. It could be either that this was a mistake, maybe they were misinformed or anything like that, or it was false information. Maybe they put out sensitive information a little bit too early. They weren't supposed to. Either way, it's not there anymore. But let's talk about what it did say. So ignore what I just said. Actually, in post, I did find a screenshot of the actual question and answer. So again, where this came from, it's a Ubisoft Q&A page. The question reads, how does upgrading from PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5 work? And here is Ubisoft's answer. As part of their next generation upgrade process, PlayStation offer a number of features designed to help you move from PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5. Backwards compatibility will be available for supported PlayStation 4 titles, but will not be possible for PlayStation 3, 2, or 1 games. The Q&A also answers the same question for the Xbox Series X, but I think we already know what their plan is with smart delivery and all that. So I won't dwell on this too much. I'll just put it up on screen. You guys can pause it if you want to read the full uh, answer, but otherwise let's just keep moving. Obviously, currently that is the case right now. There are no backwards compatibility on the PS4. Unless you count the PlayStation Now service, this service is uh, $10 a month and you're able to stream games. You can download a couple of the PS4 titles, maybe some of the PS2, but definitely not any of the PS3. And that's mostly because of the processor architecture that they decided to go with when they were creating the PS3. But regardless, you can basically stream all the games that are there and very few of them you can actually install on the PS4 console. Moving on to the other side of this coin, Microsoft has been working on backwards compatibility since, well, maybe four years ago, ever since, uh, you know, mid middle of this generation of the Xbox One, they started with a couple of titles and then each week or each month, really, it's just been continuously adding, adding, adding to the point where it's nearly the entire library. And the ones that are not backwards compatible, it's just licensing issues either. It could be something as little as there's a soundtrack in the game that you now need to get permission from whoever the creator is. Maybe take out that soundtrack. Then you gotta talk to the developers, see if they even want the game without the soundtrack, if they'll even allow the game on, the, on backwards compatibility, things like that. It could be something as little as if the contract says this is an Xbox 360 title. If it has 360, now you need to renegotiate a new contract or at least sign new documents that allow it to be on Xbox, the entire platform, not specifically any console. Anyway, the point is that they've been pretty successful at this for a while now, and they've promised to carry Xbox backwards compatibility over into next gen via game pass via if you own the disc just pop it in whatever the case is you download it from the microsoft store the point is that you are able to play games all the way from the xbox og to the xbox 360 the one next gen and probably after that and then with smart delivery they have uh something similar to dlss 2.0 i forget what their version is called but it's uh it's going to be able to play those old games using the current gen hardware and it's going to be able to upscale them to 120 frames or or 4k whatever the case is games like for example halo 5 which launched uh 2015 or something and it is 4k 60 actually 4k 30 but it will be upscalable to 4K60 and it will be able to add HDR, which was not available at the time. And this is all through the Microsoft version of DLSS 2.0. We might make a video going into more depth about the DLSS 2.0 uh, versions for each Xbox and um, PlayStation, but we're not sure yet. We'll, we'll keep you up to date on that. So you're probably thinking, why do I wanna play these old games? I'm ready for next gen. That may be true for some of you, but for a lot of people, you'd hate to spend all this money on current gen games and previously, and then all of a sudden you lose your library and have to start fresh. 
And to back this data up, IGN actually had a poll. I'll put it here. The number one thing that most people wanted on next gen was backwards compatibility. So obviously there is a market for this. There are a lot of people out there that do want this, not having two different consoles set up at just to play an older game, having everything under one console. But what it really comes down to is the approach that each of these companies are taking. So what about the hardware? Is that backwards compatible? Sony has come out and said that all your existing hardware will be forwards compatible with the PlayStation 5 minus the DualShock 4. That actually will not be compatible with next gen. For that, you're only going to be able to use the DualSense controller. Once again, let's flip that coin again. On the Xbox side of things, they actually have confirmed that all your existing hardware, including controllers, will be forwards compatible with the Series X. Your current headsets that need an optical port, obviously if you've seen the back of the Series X by now, you've noticed that there is no optical port on that console. So what they've been doing, Microsoft that is, they've been working with the manufacturers, the, the Astros, the Turtle Beach, and all these other people. They've been working with them to update the existing hardware, the existing headsets and whatnot, to be able to work via USB, similar to how PlayStation operates their headsets and things like that. So if you have something existing that uses an optical port, you will most likely have to connect it to your computer and, and download a firmware update, install it, and then there you go, moving forward, it will be working without that optical cable. Either way, whether I'm losing the port or not, just knowing that I can keep my accessories for both the PlayStation 5 and the Series X, that makes me a happy camper. I don't have to rebuy all these things just because a new system with the same exact hardware and ports is gonna come out. So really quickly, I just wanna point out that even though Sony has said themselves that uh, they're looking at the top 100 PS4 titles that uh, they want to be able to work on the PlayStation 5, we still don't have an official word from them whether they will be forwards compatible or not. And even if they are, is it gonna be a remaster or are we gonna have to pay for it again? Or is it just gonna be available with smart delivery, kind of like how Xbox is doing? We still don't know. There are a lot of unanswered questions that, I mean, it's September already. I'm hoping they answer them soon. So my question to you guys is, how do you feel about backwards compatibility? Is it a necessity for you? For me personally, it's not a deal breaker if it's not there per se, but honestly, I've built a, a, a big library on my PS4. I'm already good on my Xbox. I know they'll be there next gen, but on the PS4, there, there's a significant amount of games that I never got to play during this generation for whatever reason, and I'd like to get to them, especially if it's gonna look even better on next gen, but I don't wanna keep my PS4 around if I don't have to. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Comment below. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Twitter, Instagram, follow us, DM us. Let's talk games, let's talk tech. You guys know I'm pretty active on there. Take care.